Welcome to Cold Painting Tutorial, Emperor's Children Centurion. Here's the paint list, hit pause if you want to see what it's like. Start it off by priming the model black. In this case, I'm going to go in with the airbrush and go all over the model with a combination of Ekimos and black. To establish the base color now uh, that we have the deepest shadows on there, we're going to go back in with the airbrush um, with just straight Eki Moss here, um, primarily vertically, um, but you can get a little bit more um, uh, coverage here than, than what you think. Uh, we just want to keep that Eki Moss in black at the deepest recesses of the shadows. Now that the base color is dry, we're going to go in with a combination between um, Ekimos and Warlock Purple. It's a 5 to 3 ratio, uh, and we're going to be putting in our first highlight. In this case, we're really going to go into places in which um, the light is going to be hitting the model, uh, assuming that the light source is coming right from on top of the model in this case. You may also note that I went to a different airbrush now, so I just went to a finer tip just to make sure that I can be a little bit more precise in where I want those colors to be hitting. So because airbrushing colors is inherently more translucent than using a paintbrush, I'm going to go back in with Snow White here, um, once again with a finer airbrush tip, and just start hitting areas that's going to be the absolute brightest on the armor. That way when I go back in with another highlight, it'll be even brighter now that the white's showing up underneath it, as opposed to the purples that were there before. And now that the white's all dry, we're going to go in with Warlock Purple and Ekimos in a mix of 5 to 3 and go over all those brightest areas. And you can see how much brighter this mix is going to be uh, as it's going on to the model here. So the purple's done now, main colors are down, we're going to be going in next to hit all the gold detailings that you're going to see in a lot of the Emperor's Children artwork. So it'll be things like the Aquila on his backpack, the two eagle heads in the backpack, the sword hilt, um, and both shoulder pads and shoulder trims and things like that. The gold mix itself is a little bit different than painting gold straight out of the pot. It's a combination between Vallejo Model Air's Steel and Vallejo Game Color's Glorious Gold mixed to a 1 to 1 ratio. You're going to see that it looks very silverish, very shiny right now, and then later we're going to come in with some washes and then add in some nice depth and color to it.
So the golds are on now, they're all nice and dry. We're gonna go in and hit all the purple areas with a wash of Citadel's Drukai Violet. This is going to put a filter over top of those golds and just make sure that the transitions are nice and, and evened out, um, as well as giving us a little bit of shading um, around some of the emblems, such as the shoulder pad right here, and around the joints and creases of the legs and the backpack. Make sure that you're not hitting any of the gold areas with the purple wash right now. We will later uh, to add a little bit of extra depth to them, but we don't want to get that kind of filter onto the gold at this point. For the next wash, we're going to go into all the gold areas, and we're actually going to do two coats of Seraphim Sepia. This is where we're going to start getting that rich gold tone out of that mixture that we used before. Um, just make sure that your first coat dries entirely before putting on a second coat, otherwise it'll start to move around and pool and, and not be quite as nice and clean as you want it to be. So we've hit all the gold areas with two washes of Seraphim Sepia. Now, we're not going to give it a wash, but very specific shading in the deepest areas of those gold details with Drukai Violet. So what this is doing is just adding in a little bit of tonal and color variation to those gold areas, as well as making those deep shadows look really, really deep. Um, I love using alternate colors for different types of shadows. Um, I wouldn't go to something just like Agrax Earthshade, which is a darker brown. It's fun to have colored shadows, and that's actually a painting technique and tip back from the old Rackham Confrontation days. Don't shade just with black, shade with other deeper colors to make the model look more interesting. So you can see that the gold areas and the purple areas are done now. What we're going to do is the smaller details that are across the miniature. Starting off, we're hitting all the parchment from the purity seals with Vallejo Game Color Earth. Our first highlight for those purity seals is going to be a combination of bone white and earth mixed one to one. The last highlight will be using just bone white. Next, we're going to start on the wax of the purity seals. We're going to be hitting them with a gory red.
to highlight the wax, we're going to be going in with Vallejo Model Color Scarlet. And then to bring the entire purity seal together, we're just going to give it a wash of Agrax Earthshade. The next details that we're going to be going into are any of the silvery bits across him. So in this case, it'll be the cables across his chest, the vents along the backpack, and then some of the tubing along his face mask. What we're going to use is Vallejo Air Steel. The crest on his helmet is going to be base coated in bone white. And next we're going to come in with Nalm Oil and hit a shade on any of the silver pieces that we did, as well as the crest. Now that the model's washes have dried, we're going to go into the base. There's a few different textures there. For the flat, craggy stone stuff, we're going to be using Vallejo Model Color Stone Gray. And we're just going to lay down a um, quasi-thick layer here. Um, I'm going to go in off camera and give it one more quick layer just because it dried kind of thin. You want to make sure you have a nice solid color here and not letting any of that purple show through the bottom. For the other detailing, I'm going to go in and think that it's more of a, of a moss than a dirt, and we're going to start off by laying down a color uh, scaly green. And now that the scaly green's on, we're just going to pick out some of the higher areas of that moss with jade green. For the next part, I mixed together terracotta earth pigment with water, and we're using it as a wash to go across the entire base. So because the pigment wash dries as a powder, what we're doing here is using water and a cotton bud to pick up any of the pigment from places that we don't want it to be. This allows the pigment to sit in the recesses of the land and not be on the higher points of the base. With the miniature coming really close to completion, we're going to go in over top of the entire power sword with coal black, as well as the lenses of the eyes. I'm going to highlight the lenses of the eyes with electric blue.
Okay, now we're going to jump back to the power sword. We're going to be working with the gradients to create the energy fields that will be going over top of it. I'm going to be starting with Vallejo Game Color's turquoise, um, trying to make the concentration of the color at the end of the blade, and then start moving it backwards uh, into that coal black. Okay, we're going to keep on brightening up that blade so we have a 50-50 or 1 to 1 mix of turquoise and snow white concentrating towards the end of the blade, just letting it get a little bit brighter. And then to finalize the highlight, we're going to go in with snow white just for the tip of the sword. So to create an inverse energy pattern on that sword, I masked off half the blade, and we're going to be going over top of that white area with coal black once again. In order to reestablish our gradients across the blade, we're going to go in with turquoise first, and then that mix of turquoise and white. When you see me go in with the turquoise and white, you'll see that there's a little bit of overspray that goes across onto the blade and the shoulder pad that'll have to get fixed up later. We're going to go in for one final highlight with Snow White. So here's what the sword looks like. I cleaned up a bit of the overspray that was on the hilt of the sword with the same mix that I'm using right now to get the letters of the sword written out that's in the middle of the blade. Anywhere else that you see a little bit too much overspray, uh, you can tone down with that existing color. So if you see too much overspray on the gold, you can hit it with a couple washes of seraphim sepia and it'll go away. If you see a little bit of overspray on the leg, uh, I'll hit that with a little bit of drukai violet just to tone it down. So you have a little bit of OSL happening, but it's not enough to make the model look messy. So we're nearing the home stretch for finishing off this guy. We are going to go into all the power armor joins and then the handle of the sword with Vallejo model color black. We're also going to hit the rim of the base with black as well. Alright folks, and that is a completed Emperor's Children Centurion. Want to give a brief shout out to Matt and the team over at Mini Wargaming for the great opportunity to do a collaboration with them to create a painting tutorial. Now, if you guys want to see more things like this, you can take a look at my Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash coldpaintingtable, or take a look at us on YouTube as well. Thanks a lot, have a great day, and thanks so much for watching.